Fred's got his pillow. Did anybody get injured this morning? No. Dean said the veins were coming out of your head, Fred. Yeah, I asked Dean how it was going, and he said that you guys had a hard time picking it up. I said, well, how'd I get on the ground? He said it didn't. It hit him in the chest. <laughs> and then he said Fred's veins were popping out, lifting it. Is that uh, strap a little stiff? Yeah. Frozen. Frozen. You just want to take the time and bolt it to a pallet? What was your theory, Dean? Every strap helps. So how many are you putting on here? Six. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. We are headed to Wisconsin this morning. I'm going to turn this uh, blower down. It's loud. So we're, oh no, that's just the truck. That's just the truck. Uh, Ralph is in Kentucky with our truck picking up bourbon barrels at Buffalo Trace. Uh, we had to get some Pappy Van Winkle bar barrels and we're going to bring those back and fill them up. And uh, I was able to snag this guy, which this is always a good, uh, a good time. So we're going to be uh, heading up to Wisconsin. We have empty totes in here that we're going to take up to Andy Humphrey. And uh, yeah, we're kind of excited. So later on in this episode, we're going to announce what we're doing in Wisconsin. Like, why are we there? And uh, yeah, I think this is an important thing. It's going to help the farmers in Wisconsin. Uh, it's going to raise the bulk price of the syrup in Wisconsin. And uh, when, when everybody else follows our lead, you're welcome. You are welcome. So we are gonna fill totes of maple syrup at a and Maple, and he's going to uh, ship us the totes full of syrup, and you'll be able to take your drum, drop it off, and pick it up the same day. It's a little bit of a experiment, but we really think we like totes. Um, it's easier for us to weigh them, to grade, but Andy's gonna help us out, so this is gonna be good. So that way, when you drop your drums off at Andy's, He's gonna, he has a two inch air diaphragm pump. How long does it take us to empty a drum with a two inch Fred? 20, 30 seconds. 20, 30 seconds of drum. So two inch air diaphragm pump, 20 to 30 seconds of drum. And we typically do two drums at a time. So Andy is just basically gonna take our process here at Bissell Maple Farm and duplicate it up there in Wisconsin. Which, yeah, that's the way to do it. So you'll be able to take your drum that day. So you won't have to wait on your drums. Uh, and if this works well, we will duplicate it around the maple belt. But uh, our goal is to get a lot of Wisconsin maple syrup. So thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you at the end.
You know, Fairfield Inn should be sponsoring our channel. Take the next right to stay on Princeton Crossing, then you will arrive at your destination. So we're in Dallas, Wisconsin here, looking at a building for our friend Andy and uh, friends Andy and Mary Lynn. I'll turn you around, so it's kind of pretty. Then here's the building. And we're gonna take a look. Take a look inside. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a no go. That little shed he's got. Is he selling it? You doing a 75 point turn here, Fred? What do you got going? I didn't know where you want me to go first. Oh, I'll catch it. You know, go right up to the dock, probably. Oh, he said go down beside the house. There's a dock behind the building there. Fred, it took four Ohio boys to put this on here. Yeah. Two Wisconsin boys take it off. Is that the same one you got? No, one's bigger. Have you ever here? Yep. Perfect. Just want to leave it on the furniture, dollar. Well, that's yours, Ann. Yeah. We'll get that back. You don't sure you just don't want to leave it? Well, get more dollies. All right. So what's is this the one no one likes? Oh, I hate that. Did you buy that from me too? No. Nope. Oh. Nope. Yeah. Should have said yes. It made a better video. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one you like. I love this one. Oh, uh, why? This one's nice. This just needs a better gripper, dude. Oh, the bottom cans are too big, so it always pops that off. It's just heavy. This thing weighs 145 pounds. You should give it away. Give it away? Yeah. To somebody I don't like? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this thing. Okay. So the spiral staircase came out of a house about 20 years ago is that my brother-in-law's and he was going to restore it and mm -hmm. it sat in their barn forever gotcha and then we expressed interest in it and he gave it to us all right he used to have little fancy loops on it and all sorts of stuff what's really cool you're gonna like is my neighbor made this railing for us that we installed oh my gosh you know it took him hours to build that so there's an upstairs yeah that's uh that's the office okay the this looks cool man i gotta clean up the generators and the seat because it's still your neighbor stuff. made this yeah he does all my welding stuff that's amazing so those plates that you had in the in the uh trailers he, those too. are you serious yep what did you trade your syrup um sometimes a little bit of syrup you know i have to do this you can go up there i'm glad i was gonna go up there i'm glad you yeah, said i could yeah, <laughs> just don't the oh wait a minute is this built for uh, nate it's fine you sure 
Hi, well, that's the famous last words. I want one of these for my concentrate tank above my evaporator. Oh, no, no, you walk down that, Nate, and you come back. Yeah, just slide. Just pretend how pretty you are. You just wave. Uh, steps, you can call like it. the princess? Yeah. I was going to slide, but I'm like, you know what? I'm yeah, not as athletic as I used to be. This is cool. Oh, it's nice. It doesn't take up much space either. It's really nice. Now, the item on here that is the best is this one right here. It is. 3.4 ounces. Oh, yeah? Hell of a deal on it. <laughs> 7.75 a case with caps. Wow. Yeah, case of 12. That's those are the D&G ones? I don't know where they're from. D&G or where they uh, Did you get those from us? Yeah, I got those from you. I got a ton of them things, so you have a ton of them now. Oh, uh, I have 40-some thousand of them. <laughs> <laughs> Make so, a deal. Oh, yeah, there's a pile of them things. So this is the one you want to move. This one I want. How much move. each? Uh, 7.75 a case of 12, so... If you buy a pallet, I'll give you a better deal than that. Buy a pallet. Yep. That's yep. it. Buy a pallet. Buy Look a at this. Pallet. You got you got jugs. Ampac jugs. Regular jugs. Honey jars. Maple leaves. I got a pile of maple leaves. 50 mil, 100 mil. Uh, Look at Wisconsin maple syrup here. Sell a lot of H2O, huh? H2O leader is primarily the main one, plus some third party. But gotcha. Don't you have an evaporator that you're having that's your brand? Uh, No. You don't? We don't. Oh. Maybe someday. I got you. Tubing tools. Got the low act. Those things are awesome. Yeah, we just moved the store down here in December for our open house. It was up in... Are you glad you did it? Oh, I love it. It is nice. Otherwise, we went back and forth up the hill so many times. We had a little custom sugar house built by the Amish. Uh, we had that on display. People love that. That was out here. So what are you... That little shed there. What are you doing that little... That's a little pump house. Is it? We had that as set up on the open house as, as a display. I took a 210... BHR releaser and an electric release. Somebody's here. And all day long they probably come in, don't they? Yeah. We stay real busy. Yeah. Um, normally Mary Lynn runs the store, but she's a little preoccupied. A little bit. Yeah. So I'm kind of making things work. <laughs> Diane, Diane's been around here. She's been helping us out quite who's, a bit. Who's Diane? A little church lady. Here. Hey. Um, cool. So, yeah. Got a few tanks here, Andy. A couple of them. Sheesh. Is this two here? Yeah, right side by side. We kind of got like a like a loop drive. The guys come in the driveway, sap haulers do. They come around this way. Okay. They get right here. We pump them down into one of these three tanks here. Each one of these are nine thousands. Um, I put roofs on them this year. This one is especially just to keep um, snow out of them. Keep the snow out of them. Last year we had like five feet of snow. Well, and we had to shovel all these out by hand. <laughs> that sucked. That you could have just put bad. burners under it and melted it. Could have probably heated it up. Uh, I would really like to get my tanks inside someday where the valves don't freeze. I got heat tape on them now. Um, but right now we got 27,000 gallons of sap storage and then 15,000 of permeate. Um, I would never put sap in a silo ever again without a spray ball or a CIP system. Yeah. Because that was the most miserable thing to clean. Is that stainless? It's all stainless inside. I got you. The how, top, long, how long did it take Mary Lynn to clean it? Yeah, yeah. She wouldn't go in there. And believe it or not, I fit through that little hole over there. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah, I, I scooted right in there. It's like giving birth to a calf. Well, they got to loop me up first. <laughs> <laughs> Take yep. Shave right in there. Yeah. Yep, we go right in there. There's a little plate inside. And then I just had to shove my ladder in there, my little giant. And I reassembled it. And then I could get up about halfway. And then I made a scrub brush extension. And then I could stand on the top of this ladder in there scrubbing it. Because, you know, I did like every other sugar maker. maker. Yeah. I thought it would be so cool to have a silo. Yeah. And I got it. And I put it up. And it wasn't so cool when it came to cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why not just put a spray ball on the top and run that hot? The top is sucked in right now. I got you. And uh, I don't know. It was easier to turn into permeate storage. It's sucked in. What? Well, S somebody think, pumped it without a relief valve. Without a relief valve. Yep. When they first built so they these put things, vacuum on. no, they just pumped it. They put like a three-inch pump on the bottom. Yeah. And these tanks were never designed to pull out that much milk at a time, and they just <laughs> sucked the top in. So even with a relief valve, it was doing that. It had no relief valve because it was so old. I got gotcha. you. Um, huh. But it makes a good permeate water storage. I really like it for that. Uh, would never put sap in it again unless it had a CIP in there. Hmm. Uh, what else to tell you about it? I know it's kind of cool. The concrete slab is two feet thick. I had a old concrete guy tell me what I needed to put on there. It's two feet thick. And what I did is we did four layers of rebar. And then I put guardrail in there, like the guardrail along the highway. I did two rows of guardrail all the way around in there. So the thing's two feet thick with like four layers of rebar and two layers of guardrail. Did it sink? This way or this way? In this way. 
all the way across. So there's panels laying in there, and I tied everything together out of it with rebar. Did it sink with all that weight? Like push it into the ground a little bit? The concrete? No. Yeah. No. no. But he said I figured I, I don't think I needed that big of a slab. Is this a sap hauler? Has a cat engine in it that you got? I think it's got a Detroit. Oh yeah. I got the other one down there's got a cat in it. That okay. L eight thousand. Well, what's this one haul? How many gallons? Yeah. Twenty three hundred. Um. Yeah. Well, this one. So I had two trucks. I bought a bottle fire truck, fire truck milk truck, and then I bought another milk truck with the fiberglass one on. That was this one, and the uh, the fire truck uh, has no power. So we took the tank, which is this one, off that one, swapped it around. And then I sold the, took the fiberglass tank, and I put that, and I sold it to another farmer. Gotcha. So looks like a nice syrup tent. Back it right up the back of your building. Mm -hmm. uh, you could, yeah. Yeah, it works good. Does it go about fifty-five? The truck? It's got piles of power. Does it? I don't know if I'd want to go fifty-five. Gotcha. So Mary Lynn was getting close to being due. We wanted to get the baby come. I took her for a ride to Hall Sap. <laughs> Roughest ride as you can be. <laughs> that baby still wouldn't come out. <laughs> you no, know, Sap comes in. We meet her everything to the pump room, which don't bring in there. It's kind of loud right now. Gotcha. Gets shot up to over here. I need to hard plumb all this in. This is all temporary and permanent. Yeah. We get <laughs> this is uh, the feeder tank up top. That we're for your evaporator? Yeah, for the evaporator. Okay. There wasn't enough room inside, so we put it outside, and then it comes down. That never causes you trouble when it gets cold. No. That's why you got to green everything. Then the sack comes in to the auto machine here. Gotcha. Uh, this is the Supra of the 10 post. 10 post. 10 post. So we can take it from 2, my best is 2 to 28 with good sap, but we usually average 2 to 24 is what I like to do. So we send it in, concentrate it, we send it to the big cooling tank. So this is the big, this is the thing that's saving you a lot of headaches. Is this the first year you've run this? Yeah, we installed this during season. Gotcha. So this one's 4,000 gallons. So you can, it's 4,000 gallons of concentrate. Yep. And what we'll do is I'll start pre-concentrating all night long. As the sap's coming in, just keeping space open. Just keep RO and RO. And then if my uh, capacity on the RO drops, I just tighten her up a little bit more to keep my sugar where I want it to be. Gotcha. So when Brian or me fire up to start making syrup. Brian, let's be honest, when Brian fires. Brian starts, now it's Brian. So when we start firing up to make syrup, uh, this thing's ready to go. It's maybe half full or whatever. And then as the sap comes in during the day, we just keep RO and bring it in here. We just bring it in and build the whole thing up to 20. What temp bricks. do you keep your concentrate? 31. 31. Yeah, so it's like a slush. Does it get a little slushy? Yep, it gets a little slushy in That's there. That's good. So it agitates it. And, huh. And then... Uh, you know what this would be good for? What's that? Putting syrup in. That's a good idea. You could blend syrup in this, right? Does those motors work? Everything works. Heck yeah, Everything man. Works. Actually, if you look at it... Since I changed my mind around here so much, and our plans changed a lot, I built this thing on skids. I see that. So this thing's all, this is part of the bridge we bought, but uh, these are some of the beams. So I put this on skids, the compressors are completely on skids. So you could just drag that around. You got Would that skid loader move it? Skid loader won't move it, but the, uh, Those we're going to get a payloader from my brother, he'll move it. Um, huh. So I built this thing with the idea that move. So the only thing I got to do is just disconnect the power cord in the control box, and this thing can move anywhere. Because I knew I'm going to change my mind. Did you put planks across the ends to keep her together more? Uh, yeah, I would add some more. Like, he's got some here right yeah, now. But I would put some more cross bracing on it before we move it. We were in such a hurry this spring to put this in. Yeah. Um, it came about a month late, later than it was supposed to. Uh, the tank? The tank, yeah, because... I know it's a drains. Long story short, the guy thought it might be a... I, there's one plate that, that kind of leaked, and then he thought it might be good. And then he didn't want to sell it to me because it's worth more money. And then all of a sudden he found out it leaked again, and then he sold it to me. So he wanted to go back on our original deal. Uh, um, and it almost left me in a pickle. You don't worry about uh, the compressor everything being open to the elements? No, they sat out in the elements before. Really? A lot of your big dairy sat out. Um, if we need to, we could build something up and around. Hey, if but, it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, that works good. I, I got about 15000 invested into this setup here, but it saved me so much time. I can cook when I want to cook. Yeah. It's convenient. Um, like what we're doing right now, I RO'd this yesterday, but if I didn't want to RO it, we could save it till Monday, next Monday, a few more days from now. You could probably save it for quite a while, right? I was talking to a guy yesterday, uh, Dalen, about it, and he was saying the end of your sap with the amount of bacteria that's in it, and his cool tank, it tends to spoil, still spoil and turn to slime in there. 
Uh, but the fresh sap from beginning of season with not as much bacteria, he says that can last a long time. Even if it's frozen, it'll slime up. That's what he was saying. Huh. So, you bought a bridge? Yeah, I bought a bridge. Like, you ever hear the jokes, if, you, if you're that gullible, I'll sell you a bridge? <laughs> well, I'm that gullible and I bought the bridge. <laughs> yeah. <You're> like, <laughs> well, I got a bridge I'll sell you. If you believe that, I got a bridge I'll sell you and you went and bought one. So, last spring... Last spring we were dry, we were trying to talk about space and like moving the store around and trying to figure out what we need to do. We were going to build a new shed, and since the season wasn't very good, we didn't have the capital. And I was looking for different ideas. Well, we were going to do a bunch of fencing. I used to do road work, so I knew these guys were tearing down a bridge north of Barron, and I wanted to buy just the pilings off the bridge. Well, I knew these, some of these bridges were made out of these boards, and when I got talking to them, they're like, "Well, we'll sell you the whole bridge if you just take the whole works." I'm like, "Okay, I'll I'll take it. I'll bite." So he's like, come back with 3200 bucks cash. And then he says, we'll load you up as much as you want. So I made 10 trips, um, 10 or 12 trips. And I took the whole thing, came out in big mats is what these are. So I made 10 or 12 trips, brought them back and staged down there, unloaded them all. And then I took my skid steer and I peeled them all apart. Cause how they originally come is these boards are on edge and you drive on that one edge side and they're just big giant mats. So and big nails about that long. To put gotcha. Together. Was it like a covered bridge? Nope. Nope. And then they just paved over top of them. I got you. So it was just a wood deck where the mats were, and they paved over top. So each board is three inches thick, 14 inches tall, and they're 32 feet long. Are they heavy as all get out? Super heavy. You can't pick them up by hand. Each one probably weighs five, 600 pounds. It depends where they were at in the bridge, how wet they So were. somebody from Wisconsin could just throw it over their shoulder and just yeah. hold that right up there. I built it all with a skid steer. Wow. And then with a skid steer and a jib pull, not that one. But right now, so it takes one board to go across the end cap and two boards across the backside. So, and then I figured, well, I had the boards, I might as well run them up. Uh, what I did for the posts is I left two boards sandwiched together, so it made a six by 14 post. And then I went and got a big auger extension and I drilled eight feet in the ground and then we sunk them post eight feet down. And you weren't worried about them uh, rotting in there? No. I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest trick is how do you line up and square up a 6 by 14 post? How do you square that up in the hole to make everything even? That was the tricky part, just to get everything square. Sure. But then I, I took, uh, we put the posts in, I lobbed the tops off, and then we put another header all the way around. So it's got a 6 by 14 header all the way on edge, all the way around the top. <laughs> and then uh, and then I got this far, we tore the... Tore the trusses off the other building, put them on here, put a new roof on it. I saved all the old galvanized tin for inside. And then uh, I decided like, well, I got this building now, let's make a lean-to. So we got the lean-to over on this side. And that kind of shows you how big them boards are. So I brought that lean-to all the way across. So that was a 32 foot lean-to there. And it's gonna be a 32 foot lean-to on this side. Gotcha. You could that. probably get both tankers in there, huh? Oh, you get a lot of stuff in there. Oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. This thing will be here long after humans are gone from Earth. It is big. Sheesh. Man, massive. Huh. Yeah, this is, is you got something in the floor here? Yeah, it's all packed. It's behind the shop. Well, since we lost my shop down there, we moved everything up to here. Gotcha. And then we reused all that small roof tin for inside. Was this on the roof of the building you took down? The roof and walls. The building we took down, I'm sure glad we did, because the posts, my dad used all pine trees, like red pine. Right. They were all completely rotted off. So when the day the Amish came, we took all the trusses off. By the time I brought them home, because we left the walls up. Did they just fall? So when I came back, the whole wall tipped right over. <laughs> <laughs> it was bad. How many years did they get out of it? That shed? 16. Okay. So, I mean, my dad always said it would all live him, which it did. So, it worked out good. Yeah. You got a manhole cover here. That's it. Sheesh. Or an inspector that gets a little too curious. What is that yeah. on the top? What's that? that it's what? like a trim. Oh, trim piece. What's that? Kind of the hole? black, it's oh, trim. That's just a trim. That's an inside corner trim. Uh -huh. I had some left over from the other bill. Is it wood though? I mean, uh uh. No. It's steel. And you can buy that for like hide all your mistakes. Yeah. Push all your mistakes to the corner and then buy that. You get a big enough piece. Gotcha. It'll hide everything. So what are we gonna title this video? I don't know, Wisconsin. What bulk syrup? Do you think anybody would watch a video in Wisconsin called buying Wisconsin bulk syrup? 
Buying up Wisconsin. Buying up Wisconsin bulk syrup. You think people would watch that? That sounds... I think so. You think so? What about, like, bulk syrup price in Wisconsin? You think anybody would watch that? How long has we been buying bulk syrup from you? Uh, we're going to year four now. So year four. So this yep. is year four of buying Wisconsin syrup from A&M. Yep. And uh, here's the plan. We plan on buying a lot of syrup from Wisconsin, and we need your help, and we need Andy's help. So the plan is... We need to buy 24 semi-truck loads from Wisconsin. Um, don't need to. I mean, I can get them from another state, but I'd like to buy it from Wisconsin. And, um, you know, the color is what we need. The customers are used to the syrup, and that's the plan. So how many loads do you think you can get us? I think we can do 12. And why do you think 12 is kind of the limit? What is the... Every year we add a few more loads, and I get a few more relationships. Um and I think just for my relationships and the customers we deal with, uh, that's a sustainable amount of growth that we've that we've forecasted. So, what do you think the challenge would be to get another twelve loads? Whew, I got to make a lot more relationships. So it's just you don't know that many people to get twelve more loads. Yeah, and I think advertising. We're word of mouth. We've done this much syrup, just word of mouth, and we got a good reputation, and that's why our customers keep coming back. Is this advertising? I would say. So this is kind of, is this advertising? Yeah. This is probably the most advertising I've done ever, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> so we need to get another 12 loads. Um, we'd like another 12 loads. We've talked about maybe buying syrup somewhere. Um, actually, we're curious on where you think we should put another area to buy syrup. We've talked about Wausau. Yep. So potentially getting a building in Wausau to service that area uh, for producers in that area. And then, you know, we can haul scale over there if I'm yep. building. But uh, my plan or what I would like to do is buy 24 semi-loads, which is about 100,000 gallons of maple syrup from Wisconsin. And, uh, yeah, we need your help. So our plan is, do you want to talk about the board, like wh- how we want to kind of do it? Well, we kind of talked a little bit briefly about doing a board, just like you see at the co-op. Um, on that board, it would basically pay for futures. We would post, post up for different months of a contract that you could fulfill and say, hey, I want to fulfill this contract for this amount of money, uh, for this price on my syrup, this many pounds. And then once that contract is full for that month, there's no more options. You'll have to either pick another month or you will uh, just pick another month or you can cash out right there and there will be a cash out price. So you can sell your syrup today for this price and when you, or you can say, hey, I'm going to sell it to you in July, I'm going to sell it to you in October and I'm going to do this many pounds of syrup and then by that date, they will have to have their syrup in by that date in order to get paid. Right. So the if they sign up for July, does yep. that mean they have to bring it in July or they have to bring it sooner? They can bring it. They have to be here by July, but they can bring it sooner as long as they talk to us and stuff. I but they will not get paid until July. I got you. So they could bring it sooner and then when it's their turn. So we would just basically want to lock up spots, right? Yep. Yep. So you have a guaranteed spot for your syrup. You know, if you don't want to sell it till January 1st, just because of tax reasons, we can lock it in for January 1st. You're going to get a better price. And then every month it goes up, right? Every month it'll go up. So right now it goes up two cents a month. Is that what it is? Yep, two cents a month. So every month. So starting, when are we starting that? Uh, We've kind of already started a little bit. So basically, what was it say we started here in April? So we'll say in April it'll go up. Two cents. What did, so April, and then the next month would be four cents. Next month would be four cents, and then from there going. So forward. after twelve months, it's like an extra twenty-four cents, almost a nickel, or almost quarter. a quarter, almost a quarter. So if you want to post date your syrup and not get paid till next March, you'll make an extra quarter of a pound on your syrup. I got you. That's fair because I'm going to give the money to the bank or to you, the producer, and I will always rather give money to the producer. Yep. So one of the reasons bulk pricing is down is because the cost of capital is up. So packers can't just, you know, pay the same price. I mean, essentially the cost of capital was like nothing. It was zero for a long time. And now, you know, eight, 10%. If you do the math, that's the difference in bulk pricing. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'd rather give you the producer, the interest than the bank. That's kind of the plan. And then I can only do two loads. I got to take loads from multiple states, multiple locations, but I've allotted two loads a month from Wisconsin that pays two cents a pound in interest each month that we go 
towards the next maple season. So, yep, that's the plan. So that would be fair. Yeah, I think, I think so. so. And then the only thing would be is, I guess, um, yeah, it, and by doing the contract, uh, you would be locking in that space. If somebody else says, "Hey, I want to sell it that month," I yeah. can't. Like, we can't put you in yes. that person's slot. Nope, because I can only buy a hundred thousand gallons of syrup from Wisconsin over the next twelve months, two loads per month. Yep. So. Yeah, man. I think it's a good deal. You good with so. it? Yeah, I think it's a good deal. Let's do it. So do you want to tell everybody how much we were paying for bulk syrup? Yeah, I can tell everybody what we were paying. Right, go ahead and tell them. Yep. Uh, this year we're going to be paying uh, two.